the Battle of Strasbourg, also known as the Battle of Argentoratum, was fought in AD 357 between the Western Roman army under the Caesar Julian and the Alemanni tribal confederation led by the joint paramount king, Schnedomar. The battle took place near Strasbourg, called Argentoratum in Aminus Marcellinus the account, Argentorat in the Tabula Putangeriana. Although probably outnumbered by a substantial margin, Julian's army won a complete victory after a hard-fought struggle. With negligible casualties of their own, the Romans drove the Alemanni beyond the river Rhine, inflicting heavy losses. Julian's force, the imperial escort army of Gaul, was small but of high quality. The battle was won by the skill of the Roman infantry, with the cavalry initially performing poorly. The battle was the climax of Julian's campaigns in 355-57 to, to evict barbarian marauders from Gaul and to restore the Roman defensive line of fortifications along the Rhine, which had been largely destroyed during the Roman Civil War of 350-53. to In the years following his victory at Strasbourg, Julian was able to repair and garrison the Rhine forts and impose tributary status on the Germanic tribes beyond the border, the Alemanni. During the 3rd century, the small and fragmented tribes of Germania Libera apparently coalesced into large, loose confederations, the Franks, Alemanni and Burgundians. Although riven by internal feuding, these confederations could mobilize large forces and may have presented a greater threat to the empire than previously thought. The Alemanni, who were originally from the main valley of central Germany, had colonized the Agridecamates when the region was evacuated by the Romans in the mid-3rd century after belonging to the Roman province of Germania Superior for over 150 years. The Alemanni established a series of small pagi, mostly strung along the east bank of the Rhine. The exact number and extent of these pagi is unclear and probably changed over time. Pagi, usually pairs of pagi combined, formed kingdoms which, it is generally believed, were permanent and hereditary. The total Germanic population of Alemannia at this time has been estimated at a tiny 120,000-150,000. This compares with the about 10 million inhabitants of Roman Gaul. Alemanni society was a violent warrior society based on feuding clans, a fine breeding ground for good warriors. At this time of Strasbourg, the Alemanni Confederation appears to have been under the presidency of two patrimount kings, Schnedomar and Westralp. Schnedomar was the driving force, a man of prodigious stature, strength and energy. He was nicknamed Gigas by the Romans. He was a formidable sight in his flashing helmet and full parade armor. He is described by Aminus as the evil mastermind behind the invasion of Gaul. Under the paramount king were seven other kings. It is possible that the petty kings mentioned by Aminus were the rulers of the Pagi. Underneath the regal class were the nobles and warriors. The warriors consisted of professional war bands and levies of free men. Each nobleman could raise an average of about 50 warriors. Background Barbarian invasion of Gaul. In January 350, the Roman Empire was jointly ruled by two sons of Constantine I the Great, the Augusta Constans, who ruled the West, and Constantius II in the East. But in that month, Constans was in his turn overthrown and killed by the usurper Magnentius. Elitus from Gaul who was comes of an elite brigade in Constans Comitatus. In the east, Constantius had been engaged in a lengthy war against the Persians under Shah Shapur II, but he immediately concluded a truce in order to deal with Magnentius. He led his own comitatus to Illyricum where he assumed also command of the local comitatus, bringing his combined strike force to about 60,000. Magnentius gathered an army consisting of the Gaul comitatus and probably some Frankish and Saxon foderati and marched into Illyricum to confront Constantius. The Franks and Alemanni on the Rhine frontier now seized the opportunity presented by the absence of the best Roman forces in the Civil War to overrun much of eastern Gaul and Rhaetia. 
Libanius claims that they were incited to do so by letters from Constantius, in order to create a diversion in Magnentius' rear. The barbarians captured many of the Roman forts along the Rhine, demolished their fortifications and established permanent camps on the west bank of the river, which they used as bases to pillage Gaul during the four years that the Civil War war lasted. In excess of 20,000 Roman civilians were reported to have been abducted from Gaul and forced to work in the Alemanni's fields. In turn, this would have reinforced Alemanni raiding in Gaul by freeing many from the harvest cycle. Meanwhile, a huge number of Rome's finest troops, including most of the Gaul commentators and perhaps half the combined Eastern, Illyricum force, were wiped out in the civil war. At the Battle of Mercia in Pannonia, one of the bloodiest in Roman history, Magnentius lost an estimated 24,000 men. Constantius' army, although victorious, suffered even greater casualties. A final encounter at the Battle of Mons Seleucus in the Alps saw further heavy casualties. Such massive losses of first-grade troops could not quickly or easily be replaced. Constantius, now based in Milan, was left with an escort army of about 30,000, but Illyricum and the East had been stripped of their commutatus. With renewed Persian attacks, the East was the top priority for reinforcement and Illyricum II. In the circumstances, Constantius could only spare in the region of 13,000 men for the Gaul Commutatus, about half its previous strength. The Frankish-born general Silvanus was appointed its commander. Using his own Commutatus, Constantius succeeded in driving the Alemanni out of Rhaetia and binding the kings of southern Alemannia, Wadimar and Gundor made, with a treaty of alliance. Meanwhile, Silvanus made considerable progress in restoring the situation in Gaul, but the following year, Silvanus capitalized on his military success by proclaiming himself emperor at Colonia and leading his men in a rebellion against Constantius. Constantius responded by dispatching to Cologne a flying squad of protectorist domestici, including the future historian Aminus himself, under the command of Ursicinus. These swiftly captured and executed Silvanus and prevented a wider mutiny. But the shaken emperor decided that he needed a member of his own imperial dynasty to share the burdens of governing the empire. This was a difficult decision for a paranoid ruler who regarded all his relatives with intense suspicion and had already put to death two of his uncles and seven cousins, including Julian's half-brother Constantius Gallus. He appointed his cousin Julian as Caesar for the three Gauls and gave him overall command of forces in Gaul. The appointment was widely seen as unsuitable as Julian, who was just 23 years old, had no military experience and until that moment had spent his time studying philosophy at Athens. But Constantius' own family purges had left him little choice. Julian was his sole surviving adult male close relative. The task confronting Julian as he took up his command was daunting. The civil war had left Gaul in a chaotic state. The defensive line of the Rhine had largely collapsed. According to Aminus, Mogenshikum, Borbatomagus, Namath of Anginum, Tabernae, Salicer and Argenturate were all in German hands. Apart from the major fortified city of Colonia Agrippina, only three strong points on the Rhine remained in Roman hands. A single tower near Cologne and two forts at Rigadunum and Confluentes. Large barbarian bands were roaming and pillaging northeastern Gaul at will, reaching as far as the River Seine. So many and so large were the marauding enemy bands that Silvanus was considered a brave man for having led a large force along a wooded highway in the heart of Gaul because of the risk of ambush. Further, the Roman limit and air along the Rhine had been decimated by the fall of most of their forts to the Germans. While those units that survived intact had mostly retreated from the frontier to garrison Gaul cities, cynics at Constantius' court in Milan whispered that Julian had been given an impossible mission to rid Constantius of a potential rival for the throne. In the event, however, he surprised everyone by proving an effective military leader. 
Prelude, as a personal cavalry escort, Constantius provided Julian with 200 scholars, a regiment of cataphractarii and some mounted archers. En route to Gaul from Milan, at Torini, he received the calamitous news that Cologne, Rome's most important city and military fortress on the Rhine, had fallen to the Franks. He spent the winter of 355-356 with his escorting troops at Vienna, not far south of Lugdunum. For the 356 campaigning season, Julian's first task was to link up with the main Gaul Comitatus, which had wintered at Remy under the command of the Magister Equitum, er, Cicinus, a recently appointed successor, Marcellus. This involved a long march through country swarming with Alemanni raiding bands, many of which were as large or larger than Julian's own escort and expert at ambuscades. On the way, Julian surprised and drove off a large barbarian force that had surrounded Augusto Dunum and defeated a raiding band in the Morvan wilderness. At Reims, Julian showed his characteristic boldness by deciding, in conference with his senior commanders, to deal with the Alemanni problem at source by marching straight to Alsace and restoring Roman control of the region. On the way, however, his army was ambushed and nearly destroyed at Disempagi by a large German band who fell on two rearguard legions which had lost contact with the rest of the column in dense mist. They were rescued by Auxilla Palatina regiments that heard the uproar. Proceeding to Brotomagus in Alsace, Julian's army routed another German band in the field. But, after assessing the situation in Alsace, Julian evidently decided that his force was insufficient to prevail over the Alemanni alone. Instead, he set out to recover Cologne. From Metz, he led his army via Treveri to Rome and held Koblenz and thence along the Rhine to Cologne. Entering the ruined city unopposed, Julian's men were set to work to rebuild the city walls. Julian then concluded a peace treaty with the Franks. This had the important result of removing half the opposition from the equation and allowing Julian to focus his resources on dealing with the Alemanni. For the winter of 356 sevenths, he chose Senones near Paris as his own wintering base, but quartered most of his troops in other towns, including the main body at Reims under Marcellus, to spread the burden. A large band of Alemanni heard of his reduced escort, however, and besieged him at Sen. Julian's forces were able to hold out until, after a month, the Germans withdrew. He was so outnumbered by the enemy, however, that he was unable to sally forth and give chase. During the siege, Marcellus had failed to come to his assistance. For this omission, denounced as cowardice by Aminus, Marcellus was dismissed as Magister Equitum by Constantius and replaced by Severus a distinguished officer who was more compatible with Julian. For the 357 campaign season, a plan was laid down at Constantius' headquarters in Mediolanum to trap the Alemanni in eastern Gaul in a pincer movement. Julian would advance eastward from Reims, while the major part of Constantius' comitatus in Italy was dispatched under Magister Peditum Barbatia to Augusta Rauricorum in Rhaetia from which he was to advance northward to meet Julian. The Alemanni bands would be cornered and destroyed in the southern part of Germania I province. But large bands of Alemanni, ignoring the threat posed by the Roman maneuver, invaded and ravaged the rich Rhone Valley, even trying to take the major city of Lugdunum by assault. The attack was repulsed as the walls of the city proved too strong and the garrison, presumably Limitanea troops, too valorous. Nevertheless, the Germans had devastated a large area and taken vast amounts of booty. However, the Germans were now trapped in the interior of Gaul, as their return route to the Rhine was barred by the Roman armies. In Julian's sector, the Caesar dispatched squadrons of cavalry to lie in ambush on three roads and these successfully intercepted and destroyed the returning barbarian bands. But in Barbatio's sector, the main body of Germans were allowed to pass unmolested. 
Barbatio's chief of staff Sella rejected the urgent plea of two of his cavalry tribuni Valentinianus and Baino Bodis to deploy their squadrons on the highway that they expected the enemy would use. The escaping force reached some islands in the Rhine near Strasbourg where the raiding bands had moved their camps for safety in response to the Roman pincer movement. Nevertheless, Julian pursued him vigorously. Although without boats, his men succeeded in reaching one island, as the river had become fordable at some points due to summer drought. An entire raiding band was surprised and slaughtered, a success repeated on a few other islands. In response, the Germans evacuated the remaining islands, removing their sutlers, baggage and booty to the far side of the Rhine. Julian now turned his attention to rebuilding the fortress at Tres Tabernae, which had been destroyed by the Alemanni. Savin lay astride the Media Matrici, Strasbourg Roman Highway, at the mouth of the main entry route through the Vosges Mountains into northern Alsace a location with commanding heights overlooking the Rhine Valley. Meanwhile, probably in the vicinity of Strasbourg, the vanguard of Barbatio's army was ambushed by a strong German force as it approached the camp of Julian's deputy, Severus, who was apparently operating separately from Julian. The vanguard fled in disarray, and, instead of engaging, Barbatia led the rest of his force in a hasty retreat, under close pursuit by the Germans, out of Alsace and a good way into Brescia, in the process losing most of his sutlers, pack animals and baggage. Then Barbatia, whose cooperation with Julian had been reluctant at best, withdrew his army from the theatre of operations altogether, without Julian's permission. He sent his forces across the Alps into winter quarters in Italy. Despite it being the middle of the campaigning season and the Alemanni being far from defeated or ejected from Alsace, this reduced Roman forces in Alsace by two-thirds and effectively sabotaged the pincer strategy. It is uncertain whether Constantius instigated Barbatio's actions but it seems unlikely that the Magister would have risked breaking off operations unless confident of the Emperor's approval. Schnedomar could not ignore Julian's fortification of Savon, as it threatened his control of Alsace and blocked his main access route into the interior of Gaul. He had come to see this region as Alemanni territory by right of conquest after occupying it for several years. He also claimed to possess letters from Constantius granting the Alemanni the right to occupy those lands. Schnedoma had been surprised and dismayed by Julian's successful campaigns of 355-7, but he was encouraged by his own success against Barbatia and the intelligence brought to him by a deserter that Barbatio's withdrawal had left the Caesar with only 13,000 men. Having driven to Roman magistry from the field, Schnedomar had lost the barbarians' traditional fear of pitched battles with the Romans. The Alemanni high kings now ordered a mass mobilization of all the confederation's member tribes, gathering their bands at Strasbourg. In addition, they received the timely support of the Alemanni cantons near Rishia that had been pacified by Constantius in 355. Their leaders were overthrown in an anti-Roman coup by their optimates. Gundomade was slain and Wadamar forced at sword point to break his treaty and lead his warriors to join Schnedomar. Finally, they summoned the assistance of certain non-Alemanni tribes, partly for services rendered in the past, partly for payment. At Strasbourg on the Rhine, they gathered a combined force of some 35,000 men, according to Aminus. This figure may be an exaggeration but the exceptional size of the levy is shown by the presence of all the Alemanni kings and the report that German bands were crossing the Rhine to Strasbourg continuously for three days and nights. Their aim was to bring Julian to battle and crush him by sheer weight of numbers. They provoked Julian by sending him an ultimatum to evacuate Alsace immediately. Julian was now faced with a finely balanced judgment call. The safer option was to ignore Schnedomar's challenge and to keep his forces in their fortified bases and request an await reinforcements. 
if necessary until the following year's campaign season. But the performance of Barbatia and the Imperial Comitatus in the recent campaign cast doubt on whether such reinforcements would be supplied and on their value if they were. Such a course would also expose Gaul to a massive Germanic invasion just when the harvest was due. Alternatively, he could fight Schnedomar alone. This offered the prospect of a decisive victory, since the Alemanni forces were now, unusually, concentrated and not divided into many disparate bands. This argument was strongly made by Florentius, the praefectus Praetorio Galliarum, who had the crucial job of ensuring the army's recruits, pay and supplies. The Romans almost always won pitched battles with barbarians because of their superior equipment, organization and training. But in this case it was clearly a high-risk option because of the Germans' massive superiority in numbers. Julian decided to confront the Alemanni with just the forces at his disposal.